So I went to buy a vape at a gas station to prove to Luke Jaggers how easy it was and how simple it was. And I asked the woman, hey, do you, uh, can I get uh, one of the Juul systems? And she just looked at me with a blank stare. And she just walked out from behind the register and stared at the case. And she said, which one do you want? And I said, well, do you have any of the actual, like, full systems? And she looked at me and said, I don't know. I said, never mind. <laughs> I'll just take this Diet Coke. <laughs> That's the second shittiest vape story you've yeah. ever told. Last yeah. week being the, the front runner. What an annoying thing. Can I tell you, you know how we talk all the time about how we wish we had... You can move that pillow. Interesting. Is that pillow invading yeah, it's, your It's space? fine. You know how we talk all the time about how we wish we had interesting stories to tell on the podcast? Yeah. So today, I woke up, and sometimes I'd go get Kayla breakfast. You know, I'll go to McDonald's or whatever. Just grab it should her. be all the time, Jay. Grab her. Well, I pretty much do. I always get her a coffee on the weekend at Starbucks. Uh, anyways, so I said, hey. Well, she said, can I ask you a favor to do in the morning and i was like yeah you sure. had her cadence down perfectly right there i was like yeah sure she goes will you go get breakfast i was like well yeah obviously what do you want can i get the apple cider donuts from boyd's orchard and i was like no yeah because for context, That's, Boyd's Orchard, it's in my hometown, and it's not far. Oh, I thought that was the one in Georgetown. No, this one's, it, it's not far away, but it's a, it's a drive. Like, I have to get on a country road and drive out to this orchard. Yeah, you're orchard. going to a farm. You're not going through the, the Circle K. Exactly. And not only that, <laughs> not only that, but hey, man, I went, I ended up going. It was at 10. No. Oh, you did go? Yeah, I did go. It was at 10 a.m., at an orchard, which is also a pumpkin patch, in October, mm -hmm. you would have thought that I was going to like Kentucky Kingdom. Like, yeah, like a, a Drake concert. I mean, there were people with like those sticks waving me into the parking spaces. I was like, I just want donuts. Yeah, but not only that, I cannot believe she asked you for that. There are apple cider donuts available in your local grocer. Yeah, at first I was like, no, I'm not doing that. But I ended up doing it anyways because I'm a good boyfriend. But regardless, eh. uh, the other thing that was ridiculous, my town, it's a small town. We don't do a lot of things. We don't do uh, we do not do a lot of like 4Ks or anything like that. Is that what they're called? 4Ks? That's what this television is. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a 4K. What, what are those runs called? Like 5K. A, 5Ks. You yeah. are so close. We don't do like runs like that typically. I love how marathons I, are still working with the metric system. I know. It, it just seems like it came out of nowhere. Like marathons are really hot right now. Yeah, they are. I know quite a few people that run those marathons. Also, though, and they keep trying to add flair like with the paint and everything. Is well, Really? I, I witnessed, I think, my town's first one ever. Because <laughs> so I'm... I noticed something was going on downtown. I was like, all right, whatever. So I started driving down this country road. And dude, I was fucking, I mean, it was chaos. I was yeah. dodging people running left and right. Like normally for these 5Ks, they have them like roped off. And dude, they were they just, just they running, were just running on the side of the fucking road. It's like a Michael Bay movie. It was ridiculous. That's I weird. was legitimately fearful for them. Yeah. And... Yeah, that's that sounds it's like a a, there are so there have been so many times here in my town where you're out driving and then you'll just look over and you see massive caravans of either motorcyclists or cyclists. I celebrate you, the motorcycles. It, it just completely interrupts, disrupts. It's chaos. I actually, there. I celebrate the the bicyclists as well. However, uh, however, they're a menace. Certain towns and certain locations are catered for it more than others. Yeah. Like your town, my town, not so much. Lexington, which is a more liberally minded place. Like, I feel like they're more receptive. I like, uh, to I, the I know people that are like die hard for cyclist rights. Like, that's their thing. Oh, no. And I, I just, like, I get it. Go around. Go around. Yeah, I get it. But yeah. I think that's the worst cause. Like, ever. <laughs> like, do, do something else. Like, if you, yeah. if you're, if you decide your passion is cyclist rights, Come on. 
do do better. Yeah, I mean, because there's, there's levels to this game too. Obviously, the car is the most easiest way to get around. Then you have the motorcycle. Then you have the bicycle. But I I respect the people that are the runners far more than I do the bicyclists. I've seen I've just seen far too many fail videos. Oh where yeah, motorcycles try to weave in through traffic, and then the car hits them, and the person goes flying. Well, you know, I went on that thing watching the car wreck videos. Yeah, where I got obsessed with that. I found a. I, we, I do a lot of fail army. You know this, but I've yeah. also I caught just like WTF moments caught on camera. I've been looking up those type of videos. And yeah. they're they're just insane. There, I, I I've seen motorcyclists and cyclists. Uh, basically hit the car in front of them because the car in front of them is braking and they're not paying attention. And then they get thrown onto the car and the car is still driving and they're holding on to the <laughs> trunk or something. Was this a Michael Bay movie? Yeah. The person is just being carried along with the car and it's frightening. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that's that's funny. They're getting into the, the 4K or the 5K game there. Look, I, I, I respect a, a bicyclist as much as the next person, but I will say... <laughs> I will say... There's nothing I enjoy more than a good video on YouTube where they have like the GoPro on their helmet. Yeah. And somebody gets annoyed with them and they give them a nice little bump. I would never do it. I don't I don't advocate for it, but it's pretty funny. That's kind of fucked up. To see them being like they're not going like 80 miles an hour and they get bumped. I mean, like at a nice cruising pace and they get bumped and the best are the people in England who are like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> how dare you? So the majority of fail videos are in other countries. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's a lot of Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, things like that. Yeah, of course. Happens a lot. Yeah. Says, yeah. Right. Interesting. My mom, her boyfriend, uh, is uh, huge into motorcycles. Like, they really? go out riding. Kaylee used to own a motorcycle, like, as really? of three months ago. Did you know that? Bullshit. I swear to God. It's I've known really Kayla nice for over a year. Too. Yeah, she sold it. You're dropping this shit on me? Yep. Was it a Harley? No, it was a Honda. Crutch Rocket? Way cooler. Hondas. I like the ones. Uh, I like Hondas the- like as in the, and somebody's going to correct me if I'm wrong, but like the ones from uh, um, Indiana Jones. So that's, uh, I can't remember. I, what I was going to say is I like the ones that are like the, I think they're called the Indians. Yeah. Sure. I've seen Sons of Anarchy. Like, no, not those. Like what James Dean is seeing, yeah. seen riding on in movies. Benjamin Button, he had one. Oh, did he? Yeah, it's a nice. Uh, I think they're called Indians. You radio, radio flower, flyer. No, that's a wagon. I like the. Uh, I like the motorcycle that was it. Dane DeHaan rode at the end of Place Beyond the Pines. As he, was it Dane DeHaan? Dane, Dane DeHaan is the actor's name, yeah. Yeah, and he rode it away while uh, Bon Iver played. And it was the I only know. scene that made that movie good. I hate that. Did you what? see the video of Ryan, or the pictures of Ryan Gosling skipping, uh, was it the Oscars, to go to Disneyland with Guillermo del Toro? <laughs> <laughs> there are pictures of him. And Sounds like something we would do. You know those pictures, like when you leave a ride and you can buy the picture and it's just that still of you going, ah! Yeah, like the one Ross Cassidy sent us uh, yes. wearing our T-shirt. Yeah, there, uh, there are just pictures of Gosling and Guillermo del Toro doing that. That's amazing. I just, for some reason, I'm fascinated by celebrities when they hang out together. Gu- because uh, Guillermo like, del Toro inspired my office at my house. Really? really? Yeah, that's why I don't like it. No, I, I decided that I. It's I, not even true. I wanted it to be a his, I guess, office where he works. He wanted it to be a place which I don't think my office really does this but he wanted it to be a place where he could just he could be inspired by just sitting there and sitting in it um and mine doesn't have that vibe but i've got a window to the yeah. street of my house yeah this is actually a good question what are you smelling i wasn't i just had a sniff a sniffle moment and i wanted the microphone to pick it up this is actually a good topic i talked about this on my music episode which you haven't listened to uh, have you listened to my movie episode i was on it any of them that you on weren't it. on with Kristen? Okay, very good. Go ahead. Uh, so I had this issue the other day. I was on it. Actually, last week, we we both saw Blade Runner 2049. We talked about it. Make sure you check that out in the uh, movie episode. But walking out of that movie, there are some things in life that I watch, listen to, see, experience that just give me like this surge of creativity and inspiration where I walk out of it like wanting to create something. Kind of like after Rogue One. 
Not for me. That wasn't like it. That wasn't how it was for me. <laughs> That's not how it was for me either. I was making a joke about okay. you, but go ahead. Um, so that movie did that for me, and I <laughs> love that because you can't you can't really plan on stuff like that, like that sort of in, uh, inspiration or creativity. But the thing that bums me out the most about it is I get this excitement to want to do all this stuff, like design, make music, podcast, think about stuff, and think about stuff. The problem is we just don't have enough time to do all of that. So then like anxiety sits, uh, sets in of like, Oh, I just wrote this great song, but I also didn't do any YouTube videos, which means we're not growing, which means we should quit sight and sound. <laughs> it's just like this cycle of anxiety. Like how, how do you think, how do you think I feel at all times? Especially yeah. like, I think it's easy. I'm not saying I'm not, discounting anything that you just said but right well everybody has at, their own at least you know thing. at 5 30 you yeah. can do something exactly whereas like my day might be completely different just because it's all yeah. over the place no i i get that 100 percent. and everybody has you know everybody has their own trials and tribulations you, and you never know where you like you just never know when you can carve out time to do something it's just it's nuts and insanity but um insanity now yeah so that was weird. What? Putting up Brave the Storm's old music. Yeah. Because I was incredibly fearful that people thought it would be now. What do you like, mean? Like I, I wanted to make sure oh, that people yeah. didn't think that this was our brand new music. Like I wrote in every single title that it was in 2008. I put it in every description. I didn't want people to think that I was releasing this now. Right. But it, it, was, it was interesting. Well, it'll be much different, I think, when you put up the stuff that was recorded later. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you're planning well, on doing as long that as, still, as, right? long as people give it a chance. Like, I, people could have listened to that stuff and been like, I'm not really a fan of Snelling's music, and then not given the next stuff a chance. Yeah. But then again, that's kind of a, I don't know. As long as we're talking about it, maybe we'll keep it in the consciousness. Right. Um, so yeah, that was that was fun, though. Uh, on it, Well, fun. It was weird, but it was fun because I got to chit-chat with some people about it and of course, talk to Eric and Josh, and we made fun of ourselves. And so it's interesting fun. the dynamic of, uh, or I guess, both forms of music that we've released are legitimately on opposite ends of the spectrum. While both, in terms of style, but also both being very, very niche. I think, like obviously, uh, your music is a little bit more abrasive and whatnot, and I think just from the get-go people can decide whether or not they like it or enjoy it yeah but i also think mine has that same ability i've always said and i think you could probably attest to this just in general in life make, putting out music we've both been in communities uh whether it be you in high school or whatnot where you've had to present the music to people and you've thought in your mind and i think this today about the music that i make I've thought if you can only understand like these five other artists, you will understand what I do. Does that yeah, make sense? It does. Like if if so, if anybody's ever listened to the stuff that I've put out lately and they're like, this is odd. Like I don't really get it. I understand why you would say that. But if I could show you like Bonnie Vare, How to Dress Well, 100th, you know, like. So it can, it's kind of like the movie space on YouTube. Exactly. Like when you're trying to explain someone like Anything what Schmoes No is. alternative, yeah. Yeah. Try to explain someone what Schmoes No is. You find your entry point. Don't have you ever, just listen. <laughs> have you ever seen a Chris Duckman movie review? Right. Yeah. I've, people, I've seen people do movie reviews on yeah. YouTube. Okay. That's what they do. It's right. like it's like you have to try to find the entry point uh, to get them to understand and you have to kind of, you know, s step by step show them how to form formulate what it actually is that you're talking about. The thing with this that I found so weird is that aside from the people that just came to our shows and listened to our music, the people that I knew, like our fans, all the uh, people that are still <laughs> fans of the Brave the Storm Facebook page, uh, I knew that I would always have those people. But there right. were also times when I would show songs to people in my high school and talk to my high school friends about the music that I made and they just, they would completely disregard the genre in general. They didn't care. It's weird that when I just put that out in the Sight and Sound Facebook group, no one is like I, I have I've never seen anyone post in our group that they just don't like that genre. They're right. they just seem to be more 
open about it in general. That's and why our group as, is so good. They not just, as judgmental. Yeah. And it's weird because it was either our fans or Brave the Storm's fans that enjoy the music or very judgmental. Like, I can't listen to that scream and stuff. No one really does that. Like, right. I think maybe Kevin Marks has made the remark like, I like the songs that scream less. And it's like, well, I mean, that's, that's totally fair. I mean, right. but... But yeah, I'm like that just, too now. The older I get, no. It's just not. I just thought that that was interesting. There was no. I had nothing to be afraid of. I guess. It's, yeah. But uh. But anyway. No, I I completely get that. It's just it's interesting. I think I think it's I'm proud of it just in the sense where I think we both have at least in the music that we've made we've both made decisions that have been more against the grain type of stuff. Um, to a certain extent, I mean, I think you're, you, there are obviously more extreme versions of the music that you make that exist, and I would say that your all's music was more palatable than most other. Yeah, people don't types understand. Like, there are parts that are heavy, but I listen to that music and I'm like, this is not heavy. Yeah, people think it's heavy because of what I'm doing. Right, but it's like if you listen to that music, it's like. I, like I showed my mom's boyfriend some of our songs, and I was like, this is actually one of our prettiest songs, and I showed him. A song called Sadly Ever After, which is one of our uh, more recent ones. And I know that he was thinking in his head, this is pretty. And I was like, (laughs) it's like a love song. There's a ton of melody and beautiful leads and epic singing parts. And it's like, yeah, just but just because I'm on it doesn't mean that it's heavy. I mean, it's heavier than, you know. Yeah. Nickelback. <laughs> but but it's not heavy because the music is but anyway, music that's a whole is, other thing. Music is such a strange thing in that regard too, and uh, I, obviously this is what I talk about a lot on my music show, but just what it represents to different people. Mm-hmm. Like how I remember Kristen said when I put out my solo song, she was like, Man, this is like really chill, like really puts across like a vibe and I was like thinking to myself that right there what you've just said is the only thing i care about i don't care about if it's catchy it's moon music a hundred percent that's what i like there's a reason why it's soaked in reverb why there's echo and delay and it sounds like you're floating out in space while matthew mcconaughey floats through a wormhole like that's all i care about was that an actual inspiration no oh, absolutely okay. not I would love. I would have loved to have heard that. Yeah, like I was really thinking about Interstellar. I watched the movie again, and then I put this song out. I'll, I will tell you this, and I'll tell it to everybody else because we're coming up on Stranger Things. It was extremely, extremely important for me to finish, and I have. I've finished writing all the song, not recording, but I finished writing all the songs for this solo EP. It was very important for me to do this before Stranger Things came on because I knew that if I didn't. I would end up having because I'm probably going to watch this show and get inspired much how I did with uh, Blade Runner and I'll be making yeah. like <laughs> you know some fucking horror sounding like do 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 music and I'm gonna yeah better do, hurry do you want to be do you want to make a mixtape sure it's like Stranger Things inspired <laughs> well, I'm gonna s- scream on your chill music and ruin it for everybody make it heavy i don't care whatever <laughs> make it heavy jay hey uh, um listen last thing i really want to bring up and then we can do whatever we can podcast i guess if we want to okay um this uh, we talk a lot about this interaction that we have on youtube with comments and stuff and i think it's funny and i think it's hilarious we just talked about it a minute ago but the abr video i put up last week mm-hmm. was very bizarre to me it was enlightening it was so August burns red for those. Of yeah. You. Sorry. And we talked about them on weekly before, but when I put that, well, when I told you before I uploaded, I was like, man, I think I went a little too hard on them with this video. So I, I put like some memes in there and I made it a little bit more, you know, uh, absurd. And I uploaded it and I addressed it in the video. I was like, I know I'm going to get people who are absolutely pissed off about this, but all of a sudden, I got these people that were coming out of the woods that were just like, I agree with this. <laughs> like, Thank you for saying this. And then that went away and people were saying things like, I don't know. There's one guy that wanted me to get on a Skype call with him. Did you see that? <laughs> he was like, is there any way we can talk about this? And Why? I, I don't, I mean, I was fine with it. I, I, I wasn't going to get on a Skype call, but I was like, here, you can talk to me on social media. We, you can DM me. It's no big deal. Never heard from him, but <laughs> I mean, or her, I don't know, it could have been a girl, I don't know. But it was just it was just very strange. But again, like it's fine 
to disagree with somebody. <laughs> It's absolutely well, okay. We talked about it a little bit before the show, comic culture. It's just kind of fascinating. Uh, but uh, again, I, I've yeah. made this point on the show. We talked about it right before we hit record. There are a million times a day where I could listen to something or watch something and then go and comment on it. Right. And I don't because I just let it go. Um, it kind of goes back to the other point that I made is that the internet has no room for, you know what I mean anymore. Right. Like people just have to respond and have to comment and the amount, and and some people might say, well, you kind of respond to a lot of the comments as well, but it's kind of like, that's my, part of it is it's my video. Yeah. And there I'm addressing some of the shitty things that I read, but sometimes I just want to thank people. So that's fine. Well, it, but, so, sometimes there's legitimately good points that are made. Like yeah. you can go through our, our videos. Like when it, Max Landis had put this video. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you can go through our comments and our videos, when people have made good points that disagree with things that I say, and I'll tell them, I'm like, that's actually a really, really good point. You know? And again, that's, I mean, that's creating a dialogue and that's actually a discussion and that that's fine with me. But we talked to we listen to the fighter and the kid. I listen to Lebetard, and sometimes it can be painful to hear those yeah. people talk about movies and TV shows. But you just let it go because yeah. it's not a big deal. It's just not. Yeah. So Brendan Schaub, he reads his uh, DMs. He responded to me one time when I DM'd him about something. Uh, it wasn't like critical or anything, but he he's saying on his show that now he's getting uh, like. These DMs of people saying that they want to jack them off, like guys that are like, oh, really? I'd love to jack you off with my feet. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't like that you brought this up. I'm sorry. I have an idea for um, a vlog. A vlog? That we okay. could do together. Go for it. And if we had more time, I would have actually loved to have done it with Ellis, but uh, that would have been, it's a really cool idea. I can imagine that you're going to completely write this off and say no because. You only do J things, but I think going to and experiencing cryotherapy on a vlog. I would love to do that. Really? Fuck yeah. Because there's a place in Absolutely. Lexington. I, I want to try it. Because I, I was reading about, about all the health benefits and stuff. I want to check it out. Yeah. I know where that cryotherapy place is. It's right next to a vape shop. Full circle. <laughs> it really is. But you're down? Yeah. I'd, I'd what do you know about it? it? I saw that your friend Michael got into one. Yeah. Uh, so apparently the benefits of cryotherapy is that your body goes into freak the fuck out mode. It yeah. literally thinks that it's dying and it releases endorphins and stuff that you only get when your body goes into freak the fuck out mode. Right. And it's just really beneficial. I've also heard some, I've also heard bullshit. Anything that revolves around alternative forms of medicine and therapy you're always going to get skepticism but i mean i've also heard horror stories where people have died from it now there are there See, are i watched i watched a video of someone doing it and right. i heard some kind of rumor that like you can't breathe that shit in which that might be true to a degree but yeah that thing it sits right below your face well it's there's like, multiple versions of it so there's the one that you leave your head out, but yeah. Rogan does one where he goes into an actual chamber. Oh, and does okay. it. But I don't really know the difference. So I was that just much. like, this person, no one warned him about breathing it in. He's doing perfectly fine. He held a conversation with the guy that worked there. And it, yeah. it was like, I don't think this is that true. Right. <laughs> Anthony Bourdain did it in Nashville. Apparently, apparently people do it like every week. Yeah. Like once a week, and like it, yeah, that's the funny thing about me. If I was doing it, it would just be for the one time an experience. experience. Like, I feel fine. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I'm just curious. I, I would like to see because I've read that it helps with inflammation and it can help with mood disorders and it helps people with like things that I didn't even think about, like eczema and psoriasis and things like that. Yeah. I'm like, wow, okay. And so I just kind of thought that that was fascinating. Yeah, but it, it's kind of expensive. But then again, I don't know if what it isn't. If it, if it works for you, then it would be worth it. So, I don't know. I, w I would like to go as an experience, but if I liked it and I could tell, then... Yeah. That's that's one thing about, like, the acupuncture. It's like, sometimes you can't always tell. Like, you'll feel better, but you don't know in the long term what it actually does. So right. I would like to try that out. So, yeah, we should film it. We should call up that place and say, look, we want to come here. We're also going to film. And uh, 
Yeah, I think that'd be interesting. I'd be down. Let's uh, let's plan it. But before we plan it, let's take a break because I have to pee. I should have peed before we started this. Then we'll come back and talk New Mutants trailer. Yeah. The Sight and Sound YouTube page is the place to be. We always appreciate you checking out all the content we put out here on our podcast feed, but there is a ton of supplementary content in addition to what we talk about here. I'm over there doing album reviews for all the latest album releases. Ryan has you covered with movie news, reactions, and reviews. And from time to time, we even do television reactions in addition to original content that honestly is just meant to entertain you. Go to the description box of this podcast, click the link for the YouTube channel, and subscribe for even more sight and sound goodness. Before we talk about New Mutants, um, when are you going to give up the... uh coffee game and join me over here with the uh, the herbal teas never i'm not a tea fan really yeah it, i think it has to do a lot with um the sort of placebo effect that coffee gives you as well that that bitterness that's really strong flavor i think that adds to the mental aspect of the caffeine is doing something like coffee, I think people think that coffee that tastes stronger is more caffeinated when that's not always the case. What about, have you had green tea though? Yeah. I've green tea is kind of like that. I mean, it doesn't taste great if you don't sweeten it. Yeah, I don't but know. But it's, it's one of those, I mean, the, I think that's kind of like any tea though. I it always don't think, just tastes like I'm drinking old hot water. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like just drinking broth, but not as strong. Yeah. I don't know, but still. I had ramen last night. Good. It wasn't as good. At the same place? Yeah. Kayla, Why'd you go there? No, it wasn't the same place. It was okay. a different place. It was literally right next door to where she works, which I didn't even know they made rom- served ramen. But uh, I said, Godfather, yeah. Godfather, Goodfellas Pizza? I said, yeah, Godfather's Pizza. I said, Godfather. yeah, it's not as good. And she said, well, at least it didn't take six hours. I said, well, maybe that's why it was so good. <laughs> no, it wasn't worth it. It was better. It was definitely better when we had it together. So let's talk about... <laughs> Let's talk about New Mutants. Um, Let's do it. Surprise trailer, but it yeah, was... Yeah, where did this come from? I well, feel it was like fitting. barely been covered. It was fitting because uh, Friday the 13th was yesterday, Yeah, uh, which would have been a great uh, day to go to the theater if I cared to see Happy Death Day. Did you even know that was a movie? Of course I did. Happy Death Day. Yeah. How did you know about that? Uh, I'd seen trailers. Actually, before I had seen trailers, I saw the title of it, like on the YouTube channel that we share. Um, and I was like, what the fuck is this? This is one of the worst... Uh, this is one of the worst names of a movie I've ever seen. Well, I just... I'm, I made the comment a week or two ago that... It sounds like the album title of like a shitty metalcore band that was still in high school. Okay. Yeah, I could or see Or like that. a Metalocalypse song title. I said a couple of weeks ago that there was nothing notable coming out this month. I, and this was a movie I didn't even know. Not only I, I, the foreigner—that's something that is intriguing to me—but I'm right. not going to go. Chan. Yeah, I'm not going to go rush to the theater to see it unless I just have nothing to do. But uh, at least I knew what the foreigner was. But Happy Death Day—I didn't even know what it was until yesterday, the day it came out. So, uh, so really? yeah, yeah, I had no idea. I watched a couple of the trailers, and I mean, it's—I don't know. It's been such a great year for horror, too, I feel like, with It and everything. And maybe that's the only one I can think of, but regardless. It's like, what else? I mean, Stranger I've been, Things. I've been a fan of horror the past couple of years, especially with, like, Don't Breathe and everything. Mother. Conjuring. T- yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, I... It uh, comes at night. I, uh... It made... Where was I going with this? October 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah. So, I, I like the fact that the New Mutants trailer dropped. So... Look, man. I didn't even know it was as far along as it as it was. April is the yeah, release date. Apparently. So here here's the thing about seeing this trailer and being taken completely off guard by this. I was one hundred percent under the impression that this was going to be an X Men movie right. that had horror elements. Yeah. In the way that Captain America the Winter Soldier is a Marvel movie with political thriller elements. Right. I thought that's what we were going to get. I still thought it was going to be colorful, somewhat glossy. Uh, I thought it was going to be just kind of a more scary superhero movie because that's actually, 
to my knowledge, that itself would have been enough to differentiate it from everything else. Like, right. what what other superhero movie has horror in that? Can you think of any? Um, like which would Spawn? Maybe, I guess. I, yeah, maybe, but yeah, but more recently, like, has Marvel or DC done anything that's like? See, I don't. I Batman, maybe. I mean, that you, that's even a stretch. Yeah, yeah, that's even a stretch too. So. Like the scarecrow scenes, maybe. Right, it, but I guess I'm basically making it more of like, but that's that's just Batman, like right. Batman being Batman. But I'm talking about like, no. how can we? The spin? answer is no. Thank you. So that would have been enough, like for me, like that would have still generated a conversation. Like I like how the X Men are going in this route, the way that Deadpool went full blown comedy, things like that. Like that would have been enough. They took a harsh right turn with this trailer. Um, I showed it to my little sister, uh, who I, I've seen a lot of horror movies with her, and uh, I had I told her that it was X Men before the trailer, and she asked me like two or three times while watching it, "Are you sure this is X Men?" Like she thought that I had come across the wrong trailer. Yeah. Even after seeing people with powers, so because she See, said I, I like barely picked up on that at all. I, I didn't see anything where anybody was showcasing any sort of abilities or anything well, like that. I, I my mind instantly when, when the the jump scare with the hand in the washing machine and yeah. the fact that it's on fire. I mean, my mind just instantly went to like Pyro and right. uh, what's his name? Sun is it Sunspot? The Ten yeah. Days of Future Past. Uh, my mind just instantly go went there. So I was like, okay, there's a power. Um, there's not a lot. You're absolutely right. There's not a whole lot. There's nothing flashy that says X Men, X Men, X Men, uh, even down to the logo of the film. I mean, there's not an that not a, a mention or an ounce of like based on you know how we familiarize the X Men artwork on right. comic books or anything like that. So it was <laughs> pun intended, astonishing, and uh, I don't know, man. What was your what was your take on the trailer? I, I think again more than anything with what Fox is doing with the X-Men, I actually really, really, really appreciate the fact that they are just saying, we don't, we don't care about a universe. <laughs> I mean, they've got think all the shit that they've got going on right now within the X-Men quote unquote universe, Deadpool, obviously cable and Deadpool, uh, the stuff that's going on with the actual X-Men films, um, you've got this new mutants, you've got Legion and you've got the gifted on TV right now. And they just don't care while everybody yeah. else is doing this stuff with shared universes, Marvel, DC, whatever else is going on, the fucking monsters thing at universal. They have a fantastic property and they're just doing their own thing. And I really appreciate that, which makes sense because you look at what FX in general is doing constantly going against the grain on television with things that they do. Um, I think that's really cool. And I appreciate that. I didn't get any sort of sense that this was besides the fact that they said the word mutant in um, the trailer, I believe right. like that's the only thing I, I that could tie me to it. Um, the only thing I will say about this trailer is I really, 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 really wish that I cared more about it. And I just don't, Oh, really? I wish I did. So is it because... Okay, that's interesting that you go there. Because, again, the fact that it's going against the grain and the way that a Marvel movie might highlight Iron Man's film. This is all about Iron Man. You didn't get to take away... What what characters are you supposed to yeah. give a shit about? Like, the, it doesn't have that element. The only thing that has me at all attached to this is the title. Yeah. That's it. Like, because I, I don't really enjoy horror films... Um, the movie itself, besides having like, if this was just a movie, there would, you would not be, there, there would be no way it would even be right. Like it wouldn't even register on the heat meter. It, as a matter of fact, it wouldn't even make this segment of weekly. Probably I don't not. think like yeah. we would be talking about James Cameron. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I probably need to see more. And honestly, for me personally, this is just me. I would need to, I want there to be, the, I want the next trailer to be like, okay, here's, and, and maybe this is a negative. I don't know. People can have whatever take they want on this. I want to see somebody like using their powers. Yeah, I th I think we'll we'll definitely get that in, in the next trailer. Yeah. What are some other things that have done that where they're like, 
we're going to make this movie or this show over like underneath of this umbrella, but it's really not going to have much to do with that. I feel like was Smallville kind of like like Lois and Clark, The Adventures of Superman. Like he was Superman every now and then, but it really wasn't. He was Superman like every episode. That's true. Yeah, that was a very Superman. Like that movie. Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren. Like I was like, is this really a Punisher movie? Well, okay, so it would be like Hasselhoff's Nick Fury. Oh yeah, that TV movie. Yes, great example. Yeah. What else has done stuff like that? Um, well, there was a, like a Doctor Strange movie that was out in the seventies that they yeah. like they were just putting stuff out there. Uh, obviously, they, there was no sense of universe and things like that, right? Back then, but yeah, th- there are a lot of like random. Like it feels like that, yeah, to a certain extent. Um, I don't know. I I think what's interesting about Fox, and I think we've talked about this before, but the reason why I'm such a champion of them, for one, I just like them as a studio. But I I respect all this. I respect it. I think it's great. I Um, really do. Fox, it's it's relieving. It's relieving to not have to care so much about a universe. Yeah. Like whereas if we were having a Marvel conversation, we might nitpick like this isn't like he didn't have his arm in this movie. So why like just things like that? Where's Nick Fury's eye patch? Like. We can ask a lot of those questions, but it's, and it it's, frees it's, them up to do yeah more but, stuff. But going back where where people make fun of the continuity of the X Men franchise, and it, I'm talking about even years ago, not even now. Yeah, it never bothered me. It never ever bothered me. Logan still to this day is one of the best films of the year. Well, I'm I'm going all and the I, way, back. and I have no idea. I'm just saying in general, I have no idea what happened before. I have no idea yeah. what. You know, I don't care. Right. It was just a good movie. This goes all the way back to like when you see Professor X standing at the end of X Men Origins, <laughs> uh, and then, and then the very I think the next movie was First Class, and then seeing how he gets shot and paralyzed. Yeah. Like that moment was awesome in First Class, and I remember freaking out like, "Oh my god!" So it's kind of weird that like it became a twist, or the fact that there's two Deadpool's quote unquote in the X-Men yeah. universe and they've just if any all they did was make fun of it well the, well, the, the, the benefit Deadpool. of Deadpool though is that you can easily say it's the same one and it just not matter right because Deadpool's so absurd but uh but yeah it's just like I think that's awesome with Fox and people for whatever reason don't give Fox enough credit um because of Apocalypse like I heard it just on Movie Talk the other day someone someone worded it to where they were like um Fox has hasn't known what they're what they've been doing with the X Men franchise for the past couple of years. It's like what? That's not right. even true. It went Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, Deadpool, Logan, now New Mutants, which is people. Right. Are free. It's like that was the only misstep. And, and I don't know. I, I there are certain things you can like about that film, but it, it's, it's just sort it's of trash. It's but. just sort of funny that of everything under the X Men umbrella at Fox. The the least six maybe not least successful but the least like the thing that's probably done the worst right now is X Men yeah like I I hated X Men Apocalypse I didn't even finish it I oh was, I forgot that you watched it yeah yeah I didn't even finish that film but every, like did you watch the gifted premiere no. I really liked it like I th- I mean it wasn't amazing well, it you was, know you know how I feel about pilots though i think Pro- you just need to watch it network pilots are can be good and but it doesn't the, the but, series ends up being the same series as anything else well with all that being said i think you're exactly right this was an x-men cw show i mean that's exactly what it was it, it, it was maybe a little bit more emo that, i guess okay the emo really yeah because like, really because emo. x-men like because mutants are no, so so it has that victims, whole, but I mean it has I don't like mean a high enough. school drama feel just because kids are the primary focus, yeah. right? But they're not like the ones where it's like ah, Ashley is being mean to me. It's is not the that. acting good in it. Yes, except Stephen Moyer is a terrible actor. Who's he? He's the one that played Bill on True Blood. I don't know what True Blood is. Are you serious? <laughs> I know what it is. I just didn't watch it. He was a, like one of the main characters in True Blood. The Scars Guard. No, I, I I don't remember where I've seen the mom, the mom of the mutants. Oh, I don't know. She I've seen her somewhere, and I didn't think she was a great actress. I don't know, but regardless, yeah, like you have these kids, but they're more like they're more angsty. Okay. Like, uh, 
it's more 13 reasons why <laughs> like okay. kids as opposed to like uh the oc i don't i don't have a problem with that so much yeah. it's just the fact that what the show will be on network television is right. all i'm saying well and i know it's not, again there are exceptions it like, is serialized i mean it's not you know how many how many episodes have you watched one okay yeah well i'm Same just with limitless the limitless pilot right. it's fantastic Actually, the limitless pilot is very good. It turns into he joins the cop. Uh, he joins the police department. Yeah, it's a it's same with like almost human. Almost human, great pilot. Yeah. Okay, it's a cop show. All I'm saying it's is it exists right now. Don't be a dong. Just watch it. I'm not being a dong. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Just watch it. <laughs> it's very well known that I don't give myself to network TV. Just watch it. Brian Singer is very much involved, and he's never done anything wrong. That's not true. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say about the gifted, uh, the gifted fuck about uh, New Mutants. I want to see more. I fully support it, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who are excited about it. Like, like a Kevin Marks who likes horror and likes comic books. Luke Jagger is also somebody. It's just not f- what it's offered me right now. I I'm not getting excited about not because I don't think it looks good or anything like that. It just doesn't appeal to me yet. Okay. Besides having uh, the title, I'm excited to see. Maisie Williams. Of course. And uh, Anya Taylor-Joy has been killing it, too. I was surprised that Maisie Williams wasn't as prominently put in the trailer as she was. And yeah. It, and it could be because her character maybe doesn't have a huge role, but just saying. You know what I mean? Like, I figured they they would have had her front and center. I, well, I would think that she would have plenty to do. Because yeah. you don't cast Maisie Williams unless you intend right. on using her. Uh, especially when I can't think of any of the other actors in it, aside from Anya Taylor Joy. So a couple of uh, Game of Thrones ladies in the uh, I was gonna X-Men say, universe. That's that's what I wish would happen, but right. since they're so loosely connected, I don't know if we ever will. Because they're, as far as I know, decades apart from each other. I don't know when this takes place. But. Yeah, I'm 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 curious of how Fox is going to end up playing the cable card with all this. Because one day they could just after cable and deadpool comes out they could easily just say all right let's tie all this together if we want to with cable right and i mean as far as i know because they brought up the term new mutants in logan i mean could could we see x23 pop up in this movie that would be fucking dope if she, that would be if sick. she made like some crazy uh you know cameo that'd be sick it would be sick yeah yeah and the way that they tie in the x-men with the gifted two is actually kind of interesting how they present it all. I was going to say, because that's something that Legion just didn't bother doing. It's Well, Le- we don't know when Legion takes place, but it's, exactly. it's more, it's it would be easier to think that the Gifted plays around the, si- the same time as Logan. Let me just put it that way. Okay. Because um, isn't one of the characters supposedly Magneto's daughter? Uh, they hasn't been fully addressed but yes that's a theory yeah um and then if one of the main characters in new mutants is colossus's sister i, think. I don't know i think I that's know the case kevin marks hit us up <laughs> i think that is the case i'm sure anyway, we'll hear from you regardless um so uh, to bring it back around here uh i'm really excited because this is kind of the first time that like i said it's that harsh right turn it's the fact that like they're not even labeling them superhero movies anymore yeah. it seems like it's just the becoming and they don't need to it's just becoming movies yeah uh, doing the, and so that's it's probably the smartest move just because it is such it really a is. congested space and it, uh, and i mean it's kind of the only way i think that you can get ahead of marvel because we watched warner brothers play catch up and it failed uh, miserably man. from a marketing perspective it's actually brilliant because think about how many people could see something that superhero and because of how bloated the you know the genre and space is they are instantly turned off by it of course it's a massive market and it's making a lot of money but think about how many new people they could go in this movie see it and stumble upon a superhero film quote unquote and then be like oh well maybe i'll watch more of these maybe i'll watch a deadpool maybe i'll watch a logan you never know yeah um since we are talking about movies, I wanted your take on this real quick. Um, in my opinion, I think there's kind of hardly a take to this. The fact that uh, Mark Ruffalo sort of championed a Hulk storyline with the next three Avengers movies. Um, yeah. I heard this news, and at first I thought it was sort of like a promise that they were going to do more with Hulk and that he would be more involved. 
And the more I think about it, the more that we're just going to walk away from those three movies and be like, yeah, there was some more Hulk in this. Yeah. But like, I honestly think that this is almost just non news. Like, I'm not saying that they're not going to do it and they're not going to take care of the Hulk within these movies. But at the same time, he is 100% a side character. And I think we're just going to walk. It's hard to deal with. I think we're just, it's going to, we're going to walk away from it. The same way that we walked away from like Age of Ultron, like yeah, Hulk had some interesting stuff to do more yeah. so than the first Avengers, but it's like, it's more of just like a part of the movie. Whereas he's he's not actually going to be put on a pedestal yeah. in these next three movies. Like I think it's only news because Mark had his own idea for it when there was probably going to be an idea anyway, and they're just going to utilize his. Yeah, I think the Hulk, the way that they've utilized him so far in the MCU, has been smart. And I think he, he is very hard to deal with because he is obviously such a, quite literally, a large presence. And he he's a very uh, easy thing to be like, send Hulk in there to wreck shit and, you know, get it out, whatever. Right. I do think there are some interesting ways that they can use him as a problematic aspect of the film in the, in the films, the same way that they've used him in the comic books, like... Spider-Man versus Hulk is obviously a big thing, and Iron Did Man, you see Age Hulk of Buster. Yeah, I've seen it. No. I, I understand. I understand how it can be done, but I'm just saying I could see them using it more um, in other crossover films. But the one thing that I will say about the Hulk is, I think, I think uh, Bruce Banner is a far more interesting idea and concept. How he deals with it and struggles with it. It's a. I would love to see the Sam Esmail uh, Hulk film. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Very, uh, you know, neurotic sort of. People, uh, I think people are wondering if we're going to get World War Hulk afterwards. Yeah. I think the only way that that works is if it's a standalone movie in yeah. the way the Civil War is. I mean, they're, like, all, they're also making Planet Hulk, quote unquote, in I Thor. Mean, a Thor movie. Like, that. Yeah. That, if that tells you anything, they would rather put it on the back of Thor as opposed to world doing. world war Hulk. If Marvel does that will be, uh, an Iron Man movie. It, yeah. It'll be a Spider-Man movie. It, it's not going to be Avengers four. It's going to just, it's a too small of a story in terms of the MCU to where it has to be sort of the same way that civil war was done. Cause they're not going to yeah. do that for an Avengers movie. I mean, it's just not going to happen. But I I don't even think they touch it. But if they do, it would be in the exact same way that they utilize Planet Hulk in Thor Ragnarok. Like it just has to be like an aside right. in another movie. So did, did anyway. you hear? Uh, did you hear that other news story that came out where Jeremy Renner's pushing for a Hawkeye trilogy as well? No, that's <laughs> not true. <laughs> I, I'm fine. Look, I'm fine with Hawkeye having his own movie. I'm not. I'm not going to act like I'm, I'm going to be. I'm not going to act like I'm going to be thrilled. Did we see that? Wasn't it called like the Born whatever ultimatum? Or the Born Legacy? Yeah. I mean, if they wanted to do it, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but they could also just play with it and do like a Netflix movie for it. It would be great if like, they made a Hawkeye film, but the villains were both Tom Cruise and Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy Renner had to take them both out. Yeah. I, I think that's something that I, I, I've never heard anybody talk about is Netflix doing a Marvel movie. Yeah. Like, why not? I mean, like, if you're going to do it, actually, Hawkeye would be great to do it because yeah. he doesn't have a lot to do. Right. <laughs> and pl- I mean, he, he, I mean, it would make sense for him to have his own Netflix series, yeah. but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I'm fine with it. I'm not going to act like I'm going to get excited about it, but they, sh- I think that they should utilize all these characters, and especially like when you hear the news that Tessa Thompson confronted Kevin Feige about having a Marvel or a female-led Marvel movie. Uh, I think that's really interesting. I don't know who the hell that would. I I guess Valkyrie and her gang and Ragnarok and. I mean, we're approaching can, that with a Captain Marvel, but right? But I mean, like, not just a, one. A team. Yeah, not just one movie. Yeah, out of the you know twelve men, uh, male yeah, led, you know. Yeah, uh, the next big phase of uh, of Marvel films, I have a feeling, is going to be built on the back of probably Spider Man and Captain Marvel, hundred percent. I feel like Spider-Man's like already near the end of that contract. Like, it's only two more films or whatever it is, and I feel like yeah, the, the, it'll I think get extended. We've, Trust we've, me. we've we've talked about that before. How it, sometimes it feels like trilogies aren't enough. 
like think of how Batman yeah. trilogy is laid out. Like his early years, he did and, three things over the one, course of yeah, like he did forty years. Exactly. Yeah. Like sometimes I just want more, and I know that it gets complicated. That's why the MCU is so great. Right. Uh, sometimes it gets complicated with contracts and actors that don't want to stay there, and but that's anyway. We get a ton of stuff with a lot of these characters, and that's why we're so interested in things like Infinity War. Um, that's all I got. Uh, you don't need to take another break, do you? I'm good. Let's talk about. Mind Hunter. Let's talk about Mind Hunter. Did fell you watch asleep it? Watching. You fell asleep the watching the first two episodes. It was late last night. Okay, I have, I have takes. Okay, so mini, mini takes. I uh, you let me know about the this. new David Fincher film Mind Hunter. I didn't realize he directed four episodes. Did you know that? No, but that's first cool. two, last two. Cool. Um, Some other assholes in between. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Uh, <laughs> Sam Esmail. Mind Hunter on Netflix. I remember when the trailer came out and you suggested I watch it and it just got away from me and I didn't realize that it was coming out this week. So this movie, or excuse me, TV series on Netflix, uh, I essentially knew nothing at all. I, I didn't know anything. You didn't know anything about this? Nothing. Did you know that David Fincher was involved? Yes. Okay. Because that was part of Did you of- know to what level? I don't think I did. I don't think I remember. Yeah. I think when you told me about this was coming out, I think you you said the name David Fincher, and I was this like, is okay. His, his second foray within Netflix television yeah. also did House of, House of Cards. Cards. Yeah. Was it the first couple of episodes, maybe, of House of Cards, maybe? I think he did a few episodes of the first season, but I don't think they were consecutive. But, yeah. I mean, obviously, the the mind behind that is Bo Willimon, or at least it was. He might have yeah, left the show. His stamp on that that show, I mean, when you watch that first season, you can tell like David Fincher oh, was absolutely. like, but after that, I think it really moved past. Right. Yeah. So, um, how many seasons of Fast of Cards did you watch? Um, three full seasons, I believe. I, I watched the entire first season enjoying the show, and it was one of those things where I watched the season two premiere and season two premiere ends on a huge Fucking amazing yeah. cliffhanger, and then I just never watched any of it again. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us with you Game of Thrones for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you just are like I don't know, whatever, yeah. and it gets away from you. But uh, but anyway, how do you feel about murder mystery stuff? Because I, I've touched on this. I I did the the American Vandal review on our YouTube channel, and. I said it then, and I'll say it again, and I know very well, the murder mystery in general is such a hot property. I mean... True true crime, true specifically, crime, yeah. True crime, murder mystery, all of that stuff is... I mean, there are just droves and droves of podcasts that exist about it, and they are very popular. Uh, Kayla is a massive, massive fan of these things. Yes. So much so that I've like started being like oh there's so many movies that we could watch together like that's why she loved prisoners so much because it was sort of in that realm um did she like black mass uh i don't know if she watched much black mass but the most forgettable film of that year she watched um i want to show her the killing i think she's watched the killing but that's one that i enjoyed quite a bit and also zodiac with another david fincher project as well um but she, from the second she watched these trailers, she was sold. And then when I told her that it dropped, she just wanted to quit mid tattoo and go home and watch it like immediately. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So I turned it on again, not knowing anything about it. Didn't know who I, the main guy comes on. I didn't even know who that actor was. And I. It's a Jesse St. James from Glee. Oh, is it? He was a Glee yeah. guy? I can believe that. Yeah, the only person I recognize is his uh, partner, because he's the guy that guy in Fight Club. His name is Robert Paulson. It's the guy that chants that in Fight Club. Oh my God, it is. Mm-hmm. For a second, I thought you were trying to claim that that was Meatloaf. <laughs> but, no, yeah. no, that's the guy that's part of Project Mayhem in the kitchen. I didn't realize that until you yeah. just said that. Right. Good. So, good pull. Yeah, David Fincher, character actor. Apparently, I've seen him in other things. But anyway. I didn't realize, I didn't know it was true crime. So that's when you see like the Berkowitz and Son of Sam, all those right. names dropped. And uh, so all of that was really interesting. Okay, we're this is cool, true crime, like you said. And uh, it looks gorgeous. It is, the, yeah. it is, I think, the best looking Netflix series I've seen. Yeah. Best looking. You know, I don't like my period pieces. Oh my God. 
I don't like living in the past. So terrible. But honestly, I found myself probably 30, 40 minutes into the sh- first, into the premiere. Not really, obviously I knew, but having a hard time coming to terms with, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a period piece. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't come across. I mean, there's certain elements, certain things that the characters do. No one has pulled out like a brick as a cell phone in their yeah, pocket or anything it, like that. It doesn't. There are so many shows, I think. And one no of one's the prob- used a pay phone. One of think. the problems I have with period pieces, and I feel like they lean against that a little too much, like just nostalgia factors and, and just like Mad Men. I, f- I feel like half of the show, half of the quality of the show is just appreciating the time that it took place in where it doesn't really lean on that. The show, the the right. show leans more on on so much more than that. Just in, investigations, psychology, crime if, in general. If it wasn't about like the growth of the FBI, right? You like that opening the growth scene. of what is a serial killer? Yeah, the yeah. opening scene, that whole hostage situation. I, again, it didn't. I didn't know without the the title card. I didn't know that it was in present day. Right. I mean. You could have pointed out the cars, but even then, it's like, yeah. I don't know. I You're right. I just didn't think anything of it. Um, I think that this is a fantastic show. Yeah. I think it's- You like that? I loved the first episode, and it, and, it, and it's so weird, because what we have here is- How many this, have you watched? I watched uh, one and a half. Okay. I fell asleep, or I didn't, I went to sleep. I didn't fall asleep while watching it, uh, but I had to pause it. Did so, you get- to the uh, the one on one meeting that he had, the sit down meeting with the I was I forget this. I was killer. in the middle of like their third meeting when I paused okay. it. So I think for one, the acting is incredible in the show. I think that the the main character and the main actor I can't think the character's name is Holden. Um, I think that he is he, totally refreshing. Yeah, in a series like this. He he's incredibly smart as a character and it's like he sort of seems like this golden boy but he, he's given a job that he doesn't even want so it's like okay what, what does everyone else think of him it reminds I, me of Chris Hartwell <laughs> <laughs> How would Chris Hartwell handle serial killers No I just think I think it's interesting how other people react to him because he is not he is in law enforcement but he's not a macho man by so, any means. He's also very progressive and, in, yes. a, in a in a career that maybe is very, like you said, macho or, or just right. stuck in its ways, sort of. The people that are lighting up cigarettes and whereas he doesn't really right. do that, he doesn't know how to smoke a bong. Yeah, he like he speaks and, and very maybe eloquently. Maybe that's not very. I, I see. We've seen a lot of broken cops. Like we we've seen a lot of times where cops are, get trashed and drive, drink and drive right. and smoke weed. He doesn't know how to smoke weed. Uh, I don't know. I just thought there was something really refreshing about his character, yeah. and it felt different because the way the people were interacting with him, they had a different impression than I did. Really, like I was again told that he was very intelligent, but other people just like. They got it, but they gave him a job he didn't want. Yeah, and uh, his partner reacts to him. And his partner is constantly annoyed with him, um, but it didn't feel like he was annoying necessarily. It was great conflict. David throughout. Fincher is a master. One thing that I don't think he gets enough credit for is a master of tone, and specifically because he does this interesting thing. And I, th- I think he did this with Fight Club. I think he did this with the social network where he takes a situation and he sort of flips the tone on its head. For instance, in, in the social network, it could have been this very, it could have had a bunch of technical jargon and this and that, but that movie is actually very dry and almost dark. Like it has a dark quality to it, which a lot of Dave Fincher stuff does. Whereas this show, even though it's dealing with very dense subject matter, I mean, and it goes very deep into the, the mind of a killer, the mind of a serial killer. It's also very lighthearted. Like there is a lot of lighthearted elements about innocence. this. Innocence. It, it, it can be a funny show. There are funny circumstances. Some of, not necessarily absurdity in the sense where it's just like, like it's, you know, it's not a comedy by any means, but it doesn't, it, it's not just this dark and depressing and dreary sort of 
show. Like a show like The Killing is so dense. I mean, sometimes it's right. hard to watch. Um, I mean, there's a lot of shows that exist that are like that. The Leftovers can be hard to watch, but then it sort of takes a deep breath every now and then. And I really did appreciate that about this show. Um, yeah, I think the fact, too, that this is a show that doesn't have a ton of actors that are you know, well-known and going to make cameos and this, maybe they will, maybe they won't, but I'm not true, a true crime fan, not a murder mystery type of fan, but for people that are, this is a wet dream for you because Kayla, when certain names would come up, Oh my God, they're talking about son of Sam. Yeah. When the, I don't even know the guy's name who he had that first interrogation with, who's like very brilliant and you know, just a very, not your ideal the co-ed killer. I'm not sure. I don't know. The remember. one in jail. Yeah, the one with the mustache, the heavy set guy. The co ed killer, yeah. I mean, she was rattling off like he was a fucking baseball player, like his stats, <laughs> like off the back of his card. Like, 97 confirmed kills. Yeah, like, <laughs> like this guy did this. And it's actually kind of fun to watch the show with her. Now, there is no way that I'm going to be able to watch the show with her because she was literally watching it while she was getting ready. She's probably six episodes deep at this point. My word. I know. She is in love with this how show. many episodes are there do you know i have no idea. i think 10 or 11 maybe maybe 12 i i really really liked it yeah i i was i, I was so happy i mean i i was sitting there watching it like best looking netflix series best of netflix series like i was yeah. just so hyped to watch it i thought it was really well done i thought the dialogue it was so well written and so fascinating and interesting because i don't know a whole lot about those people right like I, I, in real life i'm not obsessed with things like that. Well, it's a that. good show to watch because it's yeah I mean, you're going to uncover so much right uh, i'm not obsessed with that right uh and but i think the most enlightening thing about it is just the education that like back in the 70s crime changed yeah. like th that's the part that i didn't really pick up on it's start like with charles manson the the i that the idea that motive is just thrown out the window and strangers are killing strangers right and like that was the fascinating part that I don't know if I've ever consciously come up with that. But uh, again, I'm not obsessed with that kind of thing in actual life. But I do like true crime stuff. Well, it, it's not, also not nearly as much as Kayla does. It's but. also fascinating that it, because I thought going into it that it could end up turning into a whodunit, and maybe it maybe it does. I have no idea. But so far, it just seems like legitimately a story about coming to terms with what a serial killer is right all that stuff so yeah, it's fascinating it's a fascinating show um man tv is killing it so so even Crazy. though your point is that you're not a fan of this stuff but you still thought the show was fantastic yeah it's 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 done from a different perspective i think i think it's done from a different perspective and a different angle maybe and like i said maybe it will go into something that i've seen before but at the end of the day, if it's done well, it's done well. Yeah. I mean... I just think it's so... I just like the idea that this character is so smart, but all he does is learn from everybody else. Yeah. Like, that's what every kind of conversation is. And, like, I know that there's con conflict, but it doesn't feel argumentative. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't feel like either character, is stu at least Holden, it doesn't feel like he's ever stuck in his own mindset. It feels like he's taking in everything and always learning and... Uh, we're learning as well and so i just i just like that it's really refreshing as a tv series in general uh for me forget about true crime I th in general i think this is this is a uh, breath of fresh air well from a character's point of view and perspective it, rem it reminds me a lot of some of the earlier seasons of breaking bad i mean just how you have people from two walks of life are good at two different things but they're teaching each other things you know right uh obviously walter white teaching jesse pinkman about chemistry whereas jesse pinkman has to teach him more about the business side of things coming from a street mentality and whatnot right. and it has that with uh he and his partner holden and his, his partner sort of these different walks but they have a common goal to make the investigations of these things much better definitely uh so yeah absolutely check it out because uh, i could see it being in my top series of the year yeah I need For to sure. watch it more, but uh, it's yeah, gonna be, it's gonna be a bummer because I was hoping to watch it with her. In fact, I'm, she'll probably rewatch it with me. I'm sure, she will. You think so? Yeah, she's really into shit like this. <laughs> really into it. I gotta go back and see how many times I mentioned Son of Sam. Um, Have you seen that movie, Son of Sam, with no. John Leguizamo? <laughs> no, it's interesting. You really? know, like you know how uh, you know why he killed people? No, 
His dog told him to. Oh, yeah. They mentioned that. Yeah. The, they mentioned that in the show. It's a yeah. bizarre film. Interesting. It sounds like that Ryan Reynolds movie. Don't know. Voices where you can hear the animals Never seen talk it. to him. Never seen it. Me neither. Talk about Dr. Doolittle. Um, anyway, check out Mindhunter. Uh, I can't wait to watch more. Um, let's take another break. Let's take a break. And then when we come back, we'll talk about... Candies. Okay, very good. Have you ever listened along with sight and sound and thought to yourself, man, I would love to have these types of conversations with other like-minded individuals? Well, there's a place for that. Head over to Facebook and be sure to join the Sight and Sound Facebook group. It was started by our listeners to share their thoughts and opinions, react and comment on episodes and topics brought up on episodes. You could even interact with Ryan and myself. It is a fantastic community that we are proud of, and we think you should join it. We've even made it easy for you. Check out the link in the description box of this podcast and get involved with the Sight and Sound Facebook group today. Let's talk about one of the greatest. Not yet. Books I, I've ever read in I, my I, life. Actually, before we before we get into that, let me just say, leading into this segment, that sometimes some certain events happen in music or just anything, really, and we're like, okay, this is going to be the topic. It's very rare that it evolves into something much more, and there's different layers and levels for us to discuss. It's also very rare that I pick the topic. You really pick it. What's funny about it is is you – actually, it's really evolved. You had brought up the fact that Eminem was going to have a new album coming out. Maybe. That's actually not confirmed. His producer let out a rumor. And so that was going to be the topic. But then he comes out with this freestyle. We'll get into all that. But <laughs> before we get into that, I want to – so I want to ask you, you checked out the Thousand Below album. Yeah. You well, really, not all of it. You enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Yeah, yeah it's pretty damn good. I said it. Uh, I put it out on the on the Facebook group that we have. If you haven't joined it, please do. Link is in this very description. Uh, I just posted it in the Facebook group. I was like, look, I think this band, uh, talking about all the the music that I made earlier in the show. I mean, if you wanted some kind of entry point, I think you could find it uh, with this band. And uh, I I agree with your review of the album where you. You enjoyed it. Yeah. There's nothing special about it. Yeah. It makes me happy because I haven't liked or cared about a band like this in a long time. But uh, it's I just free it was of a really lot of fun. like eye roll moments. Like they're not like, yeah. oh, you know, they're not like going into like, Dang. there's one moment. But and see, I'm, I, I'm weary when you, you know, I've never listened to your second EP all the way through. <laughs> because there's certain things on it that you all did that made me roll my eyes. I don't know why. Because you do things like, oh, <laughs> and it's just that was 2009. I know, but I listen to it these days and it bums me out. There's like hardly any of that on there. Plus, maybe, maybe I need to spend more time. With it. Plus, <laughs> plus that's literally even though that was a common thing, we let architects get away with. Blah! Yeah. Doing that a million times per song on every song. Yeah, but they're, mean, they're more talented. Okay, but that's not what's in question here. The, only the talented bands can use those. That's right. That, that was just one example. Regardless, that's not the point I'm trying to make here. I need you to listen. Hey, man, I need you to really do me a favor. Will you well, please I don't know if I want to. listen to this North Lane album from front to back before the end of the year. Yeah. My God. I'm going to do what it is 30 days has September. I will, I will listen to it on December 31st. I need you to listen to this and at least at the very least, give me a definitive. I don't care for it. I have been pushing this on you. I've, we've listened to it in the car and you've asked <laughs> me multiple times. Who is this? This is good. And it's but every almost time, always North Lane. Every time I ask that, I already know who it is because I'm looking at because you enjoy your, it. No, because I'm looking at the screen of your phone and I can see who it is every time. It's so infuriating. I ask it to make you mad. Um, it's, I will. It's I will so listen. infuriating to think back, man, I really need to get into music more. I really need to. 
okay, what happened? Re-energize hap- myself. What, what happened? I listened to this North Lane album. I love it. Okay, great. There's nothing else. No, nothing's going to happen. There's nothing else until the Plot and You album comes out. We, <laughs> we become disappointed with that. There's nothing else <laughs> until Bring Me the Horizon comes out with another album. It's like... Okay, where do I go after I like North Lane? What else? What a what a silly I'm, what a silly thing. I, that's why I don't have a problem saving it. Like, okay, so the Star Wars movie comes out, and then it comes out, and it's it's good. Then what? Then another then Black Panther in two months, a month and a half. Well, that's how it is with music. You got to go not, on. Not for me. You got to go on the hunt. Not for me. You got to go on. You got to hunt. You got to look around. Harry Styles. You got to look He's around. St- still the best. Album. Will we get a? Can we get an album of the year list from you? It would be top five. Okay. Probably. There's no way I can make it. Logic top 10. Harry Styles. <laughs> Thousand um, below. That's a shitty list. It's, be- you- it's better than your Spotify. All I need you to do is make another Spotify video <laughs> like you did last year and just it's just examine if it's gotten better or worse. It, it'll be better, without a doubt. <laughs> There's no question. It's just in the year of doing this podcast. And I haven't even... Your music con- listening experience yeah, I haven't grown. even consciously been worrying about that. That was a really funny video. Oh, it was a tragedy. But uh, it's already going to be better automatically. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway. All right, let's talk about Eminem. So, I addressed the fact that this rumor came out that he may be... Might or might not be releasing a be- new before album. You, before yeah. you continue, I just think it's fascinating that... We got to the music portion of the show, and your audio just spiked. Oh, of course. <laughs> for those of you, <laughs> I'm interested. For those of now. you who can't see the wavelengths here, which is your everybody. audio just spikes when we when we get to the music portion. That's hilarious. It's extremely obvious. That's great. So I'm passionate about. All right, sorry to interrupt. So yeah, this rumor came out that he may or may not be releasing an album pretty soon. Which, okay, whatever, <laughs> not a big deal. Because Eminem, honestly, in my opinion, is irrelevant, and uh, n- not to the conversation of music in general or rap and hip hop, but just now. the landscape. Yeah, not relevant. Um, he hasn't put out an album since 2013. Well, which was the Marshall Mathers LP two. Because I was say, think think about where his place is now. When you have people like Drake and Kendrick and like, we'll, we'll talk about all yeah. that. Yeah. So the the story progresses and evolves. He dropped a. Uh, freestyle video basically <laughs> blasting Donald Trump on the BET ripped yeah awards maybe I don't know if it was the awards regardless I think he, so he drops this video kind of went viral it was a big topic of conversation and then I want to get into what happened after that and, and we'll break all that down before I, we do any of that I want your take on Eminem his place at least you, from your perspective, is placed in rap and hip hop. Just do you li- have you liked Eminem over the course of your life? Absolutely. Okay. I used to be obsessed with Eminem. Right. And even beyond his music, maybe even more so his personality than his yeah. music, because I might not be able to list like the order of his LPs that came out and things like that. Do you but, like Eight Mile, the movie? Yeah. It's a really good movie. Yeah. So. Eminem growing up was one of the, he's brought me a lot of guilt because when people have asked me who's your favorite rapper I named the white guy <laughs> but it's it's just true it's just how it was right. like growing up I, I listened to a lot of his music he was the guy that I wasn't allowed to listen to yeah um, but I did it anyway and downloaded all the stuff on WinMX and Kazaa and stuff like that when that was the thing and uh, watched Eight Mile in middle school that's when it came out I mean he was all over TRL when MTV was still bumping and stuff like MTV for me was like Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and then Eminem. Like, that's what it was. And uh, you talked about how on one of your recent music episodes, how are rappers uh, the next rock stars? I think in my life, Eminem was that at at the time. I'm not at all arguing your point to where he's not relevant right now. But uh, I don't even know if I've listened to Marshall Mathers LP2. But... um, yeah, he uh, he's been one of my favorites, and uh, I think he's extremely talented, a true poet, and just someone that I've always been fascinated with and uh, interested with, definitely. Yeah, my perspective on Eminem, uh, I think 
technically he's one of technically he's one of the best rappers of all time just from a technical perspective his ability to write interesting flows rhymes his wordplay is i mean he's great um i remember back in the day when the song forever came out uh with yes. drake kanye west lil wayne I, I hadn't heard a lot from eminem at that time and he came out like a fucking goblin out of Slayed. hell and crushed it. I mean, he was fantastic on that song. But his career has been relatively interesting. Obviously, he had a fantastic career when he first came out, his partnership with Dr. Dre uh, for about three albums. And he sort of slipped into obscurity. <laughs> like people didn't really enjoy some of the stuff he was putting out, went on a little bit of like a drug bender. Then he made his comeback with, uh, was it Recovery, I think, was the album. It had a lot of pop hits on it. Yeah. With um, Love the, was that Love the Way You Lie with Rihanna? Yeah. And uh, what's that song? Um, Not Afraid. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah, yeah. it was a very big song. It's a Call of Duty song. Absolutely. And then in uh, 2013, dropped the Marshall Mathers LP2. And Where was Relapse? Relapse was before Recovery. Okay. Yeah. And, right. And that... I don't really have much context of that album, honestly. Um, I've never been the biggest Eminem fan. I, like I said, I think from he's, he's written some great songs. I think f for me personally, he only has two albums from front to back that I really, really enjoy, um, which was Marshall Mathers LP one and the Eminem show. I did not enjoy his first album from front to back. Um, and I think over time, I, I appreciate him coming back and making an appearance today in modern hip hop culture. Uh, Marshall Mathers LP2 was the first album from him that I've ever ha had the opportunity to review. And I really didn't care for that album. Okay. I, I think, again, executed very well from a technical perspective. But Eminem has not done a good job, in my opinion, of keeping up with the times and being a modern individual. I think his songs are... O overly produced i think his songs are like they just sound they don't they sound old they sound like they don't hold up in today's standards and that's always bothered me um also his albums are very bloated he he can rap fast he can yeah. use a lot of words his last album marshall mathers lp2 clocks in in an hour and 20 minutes Does that have like, like 20 songs 15 songs 15 or 17 songs on jesus it. and it's just too much man like you know hold back <laughs> it's uh, you can you know you, he also is a great storyteller in his songs as well um so with him announcing a new album and coming back with something i'm obviously interested because i think he is a legend in the hip-hop game I mean, he's defined white. He, he not only does he define white rapper, he make he at least brought white rappers out of obscurity from the days of Vanilla Ice. Right. Um, but his place of coming back is a little bit strange. He has the backing of Apple, Apple Music, Beats. You know his relationship with Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. So, and rap being the biggest music genre, the most popular music genre around right now is fascinating as well. I'm interested to see what his place in all of this is. Um, that's all of that out of the way. Now we get into this Donald Trump freestyle. <laughs> uh, I don't want to turn this into like some crazy, overly uh, political discussion, but it does have implications, I think, w with culture. I think it has implications with pop culture and music and the political space as well. What was your take on hearing this for the first time, seeing it and the contents, the subject matter in general? I was shocked that yeah. this was something I was actually experiencing Okay, because, and I tweeted about this, how lately it's just sort of felt like more than ever, we have activated an open rebellion against our president. And I know that this started even when he was campaigning. I'm not saying that the <laughs> anti-Trump is just now happening. Right. I'm did, not. Did you feel this in the in the Bush era? I mean, you were much younger, but uh, I didn't feel it as okay. much. I, I remember at least with the people that I was around, people being more proud of Bush than not. It was more uh, as time because went we on. We live in a red state. That's well that. But I mean, yeah. I I was watching the the late night climate is where I got a lot of my context politically when I was younger. When I, I mean, there was a time I didn't even give a shit about politics, but I would turn on The Late Show, and David Letterman would just make fun of George Bush. Right. And they would discuss the war, but 
But it, the, the commentary, from what I remember on George Bush, is completely different. And yeah, obviously, just very. for my opinion, there's a reason for that. I mean, I'm, 100%. But uh, it, it's just, it, it's unlike anything that I've certainly experienced. Uh, and I think probably most people. But it, it's very different because I was bringing up the examples of Kaepernick and then the NFL in general, and now Eminem. And we were, <laughs> when we talked about Kaepernick in the NFL, we were talking about how how people are so outraged by this silent protest people that right. was that was enough the silent protest uh that was displayed by Kaepernick and has since evolved over time people were outraged by that silence and the fact that someone just came out and did the exact opposite thing and maybe it hasn't had enough time to breathe and you can tell me a little bit more about it because I haven't been following the story but I don't even remember Eminem trending that night at right. least at least that night when it happened yeah so i th- i think it's a very backwards response at least how i've interpreted it i feel there, like there was more buzz about it after, after it happened yeah, yeah. I, f- I feel like the nfl is a bigger bigger story comparatively to the the silent protest right. like that's what i'm so fascinated by but the other thing too is like there's a lot that you can criticize eminem about like particularly his language throughout Over the course and, of his and, career and yeah. i'm oh no 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 I'm in the rap Oh, okay. The fact that someone is being so coarse towards the president, which I mean, I'm not saying a lot of people aren't, and I'm not the kind of guy that spends a lot of time judging people based on their language. Right. I don't have any interest in that. But there's also an artist who that, has actually transcended um, over the course of his career. Fun, funny enough, has transcended criticism. <laughs> no, both parties. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is something he's been very outspoken against via you know, conservative and, and Republican sort of party. But early in his career, he had a much heated fight with uh, Tipper Gore with censorship and whatnot. So it, it's sort of funny how that uh, plays out on both ends of the spectrum. As right. Well. So uh, anyway, I, I, I mean, you could talk a lot about and we could discuss, not that we are, but I mean, you could criticize him for alienating his fans. Just being like, look, if you follow Trump, I don't want you as a fan. Like right. that is very interesting, and I feel like that's one of the bigger things that people could attack him for. But uh, I, I could not believe that it was actually happening. Right. The I think the most fascinating thing with this whole discussion is music's place in all of this, um, because a lot of people, when Trump became president there was like this big joke that was going around. It was like, Oh, music's going to get a lot more interesting and a lot more better because obviously the pop culture landscape, entertainment in general, the creative space is usually typically more liberally minded, right, wrong or indifferent. Regardless, it, I think it's been interesting that it seemed, I think we've seen it with movies and television. People have been outspoken and they're, they're, quote unquote protests and speaking out against things that they don't agree with. But music has been a little bit quiet, it seems like. And I think there's a specific reason for that. Back in the day in the 60s and even my first realization of anything like this was when I was in high school. My junior year in 2004 was uh, actually it was my sophomore year, I think. Yeah, sophomore year, 2003. No. You graduated in 05. 2003, yes. <laughs> I went to Warp Tour for the very first time. Okay. And, I mean, punk rock, music festival, saw all types of stuff that was anti-Bush. I'd never been exposed to anything Green like Day. that. Green Day, anti-flag. Anti-flag was, was very big. Um, Rise Against at the time when they were more of like a punk rock band. I mean, they still are to a certain extent, but let's, let's be careful using that word. Uh, it's... <laughs> It was just very jarring for me as somebody that was so young at that time. Yeah. Been involved in a community that was more conservative minded and just to see all these people outspoken against it was very shocking. But, you know, in the 60s and in that time, just throughout, actually throughout history, a lot of quote unquote protest music and a lot of music that was outspoken against politics or politically minded has been rock music. Yeah. I mean, you, you go back to the days of the Vietnam War, Reagan administration with with punk rock and hardcore music coming to prominence. And then, you know, with the Bush administration was sort of the same thing. But now, rock music is not 
a big deal. It doesn't have a voice. I mean, right. it has a voice, but it not it's not going to move the needle. The most popular music genre is rap and hip hop. Now there are rappers, there are hip hop artists that that do dance in these waters. I think you know Killer Mike with Run the Jewels, obviously very politically minded. Uh, over the years, Public Enemy to a certain extent, and there have been some rappers. But when we're talking about the top, the the pinnacle level artists, and we're talking about Kanye West, we're talking about Drake, we're talking about Jay Z, Eminem is one of those people. It is very meaningful for somebody like Eminem to say something like this. Yes. This is the most punk rock thing that's happened in this space. And I think whatever your values are just from a music perspective and just looking at it from a music perspective, he has made the biggest difference. Killer Mike is a, is a massive, you know, artist and whatnot, but he does not carry the same weight right. that Eminem does. And I'm sorry, you're not going to get this from Kanye West. You're not going to get this from Drake. You know, it's hard to take somebody like that seriously when they're they say something like this, but they also Eminem is the John Oliver to Drake's Jimmy Fallon to a certain extent. <laughs> what I will also say about that to be a little bit critical of the rap and hip hop genre, and I'm not a hip hop head, but you know, I mean, this is also a guy who has said faggot in the past. Right. I mean, he's talked about violence towards women yeah i mean at a certain point i think from a perspective it's hard i'm not saying it it's hard to take him seriously because i you know whatever about the things that he said i think it's 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 good if you feel that way but it's hard to come to terms with some of the stuff that some of these i mean rap and hip-hop is very it's it's been very degrading towards women definitely I mean, from that perspective, it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow, I think, for people. And they're giving a lot of ammo to the other side. Right. So I think that's very interesting. The fallout from this has been beyond fascinating. <laughs> Just today, I read an article where Vince Staples... Do you know who Vince Staples is? No. Vince Staples, a, another big hip-hop artist, a pitchfork darling, came okay. out and said that Eminem's freestyle on Trump was trash. And was very critical about it. Because of, like, was he judging it as music? He like, was, lyrically? Yes. Okay, so what's interesting about that yeah. is that was sort of my takeaway. Okay. Like, when I watched it, I was like, I, I cared more about the statement, I right. think. And I was much more intrigued by that. The content, the subject but I, matter, yeah. But if this was a song on his upcoming album, if that verse was in a song, I mean, I, it, it wouldn't be the banger verse i don't think like right i musically i was just kind of like okay what's whatever I, I did care about the words but as a song it didn't really yeah do anything well to further even before that this thing came out with vince staples anthony fantano put out a great video and i think people should check it out uh if you're interested in the subject of <laughs> are we the title of it and it and it sums it up very well are we too jaded about this eminem rap like a lot of people coming out saying like just being very critical of it in general just being like calling it low-hanging fruit like basically saying that what he was doing was it, it was just like i don't know it, it, to me it seems like people are being critical of it because it's eminem somebody that's not relevant because it we're bombarded with trump stuff already and it's like God, God, and these are people that agree with what he's saying. And it's like, is this the right fucking time? And again, I'm, I'm just looking at it from somebody's perspective that does agree with it. Is this the right time to be critical about something like this? Right. Like, it meant a lot for him to go on this platform, on this stage, and say what he said. That's that's just what's really, really annoying about it. Yeah. And again, I don't know this firsthand, so I'm letting you inform me because I haven't been following it. But again, but that's that's just where we are. And it's like people have a criticism for everything. And look, I, and going back to the fact that he would use that uh, the language uh, that he's used over time, I think there is a bit of a difference. I think there is a sliding scale. Yeah. If you go back to the things that we talked about with like Harvey Weinstein and Andy Signore, yeah, which, are, there, yeah. which are like acts, 
right and ab- of abuse yeah i think that there is a sliding scale i don't even u- i don't use the word faggot right i don't because yeah. rightfully so i'm unco- <laughs> That's a good thing I, I mean i'm uncomfortable with it yeah. but um but at the same time it's like i think it's different if you use that word in a song cuz i don't know have we ever heard of Eminem disrespecting the gay community or like i, I don't know I, i'm I mean, not i'm not at all saying that people can't be offended by that word right but i think there's a sliding scale so s- saying that word in some music over the past few years is different than if he's been abusing and like really harming people and right. things like that there's a sliding scale i don't i think it's gray i don't think it's black and white i think there are some things that are clearly horrible yeah uh, i wouldn't label it as that and but again i'm not saying that people can't be upset with him for that i'm not at all saying that but I think that saying, oh, he said that word in a song before yeah. doesn't dis- doesn't just automatically discredit what he's doing. 100%. It doesn't. And people, th- that's where we are now. It's like people will go back and research a tweet from five years ago yeah. and just completely discredit everything you're doing and saying now right. because they found this. And I'm uncomfortable with that as well. I'm right. not. I'm not saying that you can't pick up on behaviors again, like Harvey Weinstein. The fact that he's been doing this for years. I'm not saying you can't pick up on those behaviors. But as someone who was learning Twitter and learned that you can instantly just put out your thoughts into the air, yeah. I've tweeted dumb stuff. I, I mean, the, the, you have to take into context. Like you're right. To go, I think it's silly to go back like a decade and dig up stuff like that. I think it's more or less like, what have you done for me lately? I mean, for instance, let's just say. Kanye West had the lyric, uh, you know, me and Taylor might still have sex. I made that bitch famous. Now, if he came out next week and started talking about women's rights, it'd be kind of be like, well, <laughs> I, mean, <kind> of like, <laughs> uh, I mean, look, just, just stick to what you're good at. Stay in your <laughs> lane. Just make some rap records. Like there is a certain level of like, we don't need certain people. Like I don't need Drake to come out and be a fucking you know, champion against Donald Trump. Make your island songs, okay? Sing about whatever. Well, it depends. Yeah. What is it? Are you saying that, like, as a personality, he can't? Oh do no, absolutely activism not. Activism or like, uh, you I, don't need it in his music, is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. And if he wants to do that, a hundred percent, that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, I do understand the expectation of it's like, okay, we get it. Like, uh, you want to be. I think it's much more powerful for him to just go come right out and say how he feels as opposed to just all of a sudden one day incorporate and incorporate it into his music. I think from a critical perspective, it makes more sense. So like run the jewels, they there it's perfectly fine for them to rap about uh political from a political perspective in one song. And then in the next song rap about like partying and dropping Molly, like you understand that they've, that's that's their uh, workspace, if that makes right. sense. So here, looking forward to his new record. Here, here's what I'm thinking about. I think that, like you said, no, the music music hasn't activated right since Donald Trump. It hasn't done what you expected. I think that someone like Eminem has been sitting in this stew, yeah, for the past couple of years, and I can see his album coming out and exploding yeah. with this type of material. Right. So I'm wondering where where are you in that sense? Do you welcome that or Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, I, I think it's again, I think it's interesting. Uh, rap and hip hop represents culture regardless of how you feel about the genre, it's just true. The the music genre itself affects so much of what we do on our day-to-day life. Uh, how we how we act, how we speak, how we dress, uh, other things. I mean, it's just that's just how it is. And I think for him to do something like this would be fascinating. It would be very interesting to see the route that he might take with it. Would it be a fully political album? And if it is, I think uh, hope I hope to God that it's not an hour plus long, seventeen track thing. Like just give us something concise. That's what right. I would hope for. You know, I, I look at somebody like Kendrick Lamar who has not necessarily gone on a like overtly political level, but he has addressed so many things, whether it be uh, obviously racial injustices, racial identity within his own community. That's the stuff that I enjoy quite a bit. 
uh, at least from Kendrick Lamar, even though I can't really relate to it, is he's telling it from his own perspective and his own take. Like he's not painting these broad strokes of things that he doesn't really know about. He's talking about things that affect him and the people around him. I think Eminem, uh, you know, he has the ability to, to put an album out f- from this Trump, Donald Trump stuff. You can tell he's passionate about it. I mean, yeah. I, I thought he was being very, very sincere in the things that he was saying and that he, he needed to get something like this off of his chest. Um, but I, I don't know. I just hope that if he does do it, he does it with purpose and it's not just like, okay, I'm going to drop three political songs on this album. And it, it is a very, it's a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Like if you're going to put something out like this and it means something, you kind of need to watch what you say around the rest of your music. I think if you are going to stand on a stage and on a platform and take up this mantle to fight for what you believe in. Right. I think there is a certain amount of responsibility that comes along with it, that you have to, you're choosing to be a voice. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to tear you down. Well, if there's anybody that can do it, it's him and him. Because, I mean, that, yeah. he's, he's faced that his entire career. Yeah, for sure. Being in the political landscape's face and but people Beyond- wanting to shut him down and all kinds of shit. Beyonce, I mean, Lemonade had a ton of things in it while being personal to her own life and the things going on in her own life. Had a ton of stuff in it, a ton of subject matter talking, again, about racial identity, and racial injustices and stuff. I mean, that – I think – he needs to look at what other people have done and where they have succeeded. Kendrick Lamar, Beyonce being to, and to a certain extent, run the jewels that they've been people who have been able to do it successfully. Right. But yeah. Are you excited about an Eminem album? Yes. Are you really? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm curious. And yeah. especially if this, if this is what I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fascinating. Yeah. We'll be talking about it again in no time. It's interesting. Um, I, I wish I wish the community would be a little bit more accepting of it. I think that's what's bummed me out. It's, everybody's just been so, I don't know, salty. About lame. It. Yeah, <laughs> really fucking lame. Like, maybe don't pick apart how well his rhymes are. Listen, Eminem can wrap circles around m- most people that exist on planet Earth. <laughs> okay, like Vince Staples, if if he wanted to. He could come out and annihilate Vince Staples. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, are you serious right now? You just put out an album called Big Fish Theory. Like, take it easy. Okay. <laughs> can, can you write this in a Medium article? No, you can do it for me. You can transcribe it. Okay. Luke Jaggers, transcribe our uh, Sight and Sound Weekly posts. <laughs> That'd be great. I don't have anything else. I'm done. Okay. I, I'm excited. I can't yeah. wait to hear his album. I wish it was coming out sooner. Yeah. But, but anyway. It might be. I don't know. He could drop it tomorrow. That's true. I might go but and I'm also curious to listen to his last album since I didn't think anything of it and you didn't care for it. I, I'm just curious about all of it now. I need to address something before we close things out. Okay. Luke Jaggers reached out to me about helping him with his vape stuff. Okay. Very good. Uh, Luke Jaggers has also just told me that now Ralph Lenardic is having problems with his vape. And he's asking, he said, he wants to know what he should do. Guys, listen. <laughs> I appreciate that <laughs> you are trusting me with your advice and like you want me to tell you I'm not the guy. Look it up on YouTube. Google it. Go to your local vape shops. Look, I get just as frustrated as other people, but they get paid to do it. They maybe want to do it, but just go on YouTube. I learned how to do, it's not a fucking skill. I'm not learning how to skateboard and do kick flips like this. I learned how to do all this shit on YouTube. And so can you just look it up. I'm also just fascinated that something to learn. It, it, oh yeah. It should just be pushing a button. and. No. I built this. There's there's some... I built it. It, do, it doesn't have to be that way. I didn't build mine. Uh, all the problems that come up with vaping can be avoided if you just start taking things that could go wrong out of the equation. Okay. Well, then maybe that's what people want to ask you about. Because I don't know that stuff. Look it up. Grim Green's YouTube channel. 
Go there. Whatever device you have, type it into YouTube. <laughs> the just, internet is amazing. I just think it's funny that uh, you're talking about this because I don't know how many times we've talked about how much you hate talking about. I, I hate that's, it. That's where it's just a thing came from. Yeah, it really is. If someone asked you about vaping. In and a you Starbucks drive through yeah. That's where it's just the thing came from. It's because people were asking you about vaping. I also think it's funny that, not that I would entertain it. I would probably have the same reaction as you, but I think yeah. it's hilarious that they go to you and not ask me. Why would they ask you? I vape, but I also don't have yeah. a lot of problems. Yeah. I had simple problems like flooding. But. Listen, if you haven't heard me talk about it extensively, <laughs> chances are I don't want to talk to you about it. Okay. I'm a massive soccer fan. Guess what I don't want to do? I don't want to talk to you about soccer. I really don't want to. <laughs> do you have anything like that in your life that you are really invested in that you just don't want to talk to anybody about? I don't want to talk about movies and television to people that aren't in the circles. UK basketball. Do you want to talk to anybody about UK basketball? It, de- it depends. Yeah. It depends. It depends on the type of fan that I'm talking to, Kentucky fans. And to be fair to Ralph and Luke and anybody else that might have questions, talking about vaping with people is a lot like talking about sports with people. Before they've even asked you the question, they already have the opinion on whatever your response could be. Right. It's like, oh, what juice is that? Oh, it's this juice. Well, this one's way better. Why the fuck did you ask me? Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I get annoyed by the type of UK fan that I might be talking to. Yeah. Because I don't care about certain things that UK fans care about. Like, I don't know how many times I've argued one and done with people. And it's like, well, it's actually bad for the NCAA. No, it's It's, not. What does it matter? Nobody cares. And I'm like, how about just, it's about the players. The the NCAA is bad for the NCAA. It's like, it's going back to that deleted conversation we had on the podcast that I took out about Louisville. Um, It's like, I, I am much more of a champion of the individual than I am the institution. I'm, I, I naturally am just always about that. Rage against the machine. Yeah. I, that's just my attitude. I, when it comes back, when it comes to like, I remember talking about it with Universal and Tom Cruise. It's like I just took Tom Cruise aside because I trust him more than I trust the movie studio to make certain decisions. And it's like, I, I'm just that way. So I care more about, uh, I, I understand the rights that those human beings have. Right. And I'm, I don't just have to think of them as entertainers either. Like sometimes I'm guilty of maybe being an all and starstruck, but at the same time, they're people. So if coach Cal is like, yeah, I'm just going to let them decide if they want to go to the NBA. Like, yeah, well, I'm not doing this for you. It's about the players. And so I don't have to keep them around if they don't want to be kept around and the way that they're exploited and things like that. So it's like, so anyway, Long story short, I've had that talk a million times, and like you said, people just, they're not listening. They just talk, and right. so I get annoyed by that, but but I think the better example is just talking about movies to people that are die hard about it, which yeah. is fine, but the, the only reason I have a problem with that, it's not because I'm not happy that people are excited to talk to me about things. It's because... They don't care because they're not diehard fans. Whatever I say back, whether it's like, I'm really excited because this actor has been on this streak and blah, blah, blah. No matter the diehard response that I have, they don't care. Yeah. And so sometimes I can tell that they're sorry they even brought it up because I have, I'm wanting to have a completely different type of conversation. And right. so I get annoyed when it just, their face falls flat and they're like, yeah. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it's like okay right. gr- great talk that's why i get annoyed by stuff like that but don't ask me about vaping things there's people out there that can help you with it more than i can <laughs> also as luke pointed out i'm so far away like i can only i don't know what i'm so far away i can't help him like he was at work i was at work <laughs> I didn't even have the product. Did he try to call you? No. What would you have done if he tried to call you? Look it up. (laughs) Go on Reddit. All right. The other day, no, no lie. I swear to God, the other day, no, it was the question he was asking me. I literally typed it out on Google 
and it took me to a Reddit page of of somebody asking the exact same question. I, uh, you know what I always say, Jay. I don't think you're dumb for not knowing something. I think you're dumb if you don't Google it before admitting right. you don't know something. Google it. I've said that for years. Google me, motherfucker. You can probably go back 10 years and find the tweet and then uh, harass me for it. Um, Let's so, get out of here. I have yeah, to go home, work on music, record box. I need to go to work. <laughs> um, all right. So anyway, thanks uh, for everyone uh, who checked out and uh, – took the time to listen to my broken bed EP, which is the first EP that brave the storm did in 2008, mind you. Uh, thanks for everybody who gave that a chance. I will be dropping, uh, an album commentary that myself and Eric Mulder did. Uh, that'll go out this, this coming Wednesday. And then the week after that, I will be, uh, releasing the EP that Jay Williams didn't finish called my mind is elsewhere. So that'll go out the next week. Um, also that next week we will be recording the brave the storm, uh, reunion podcast. I don't know when that's going to be released yet, but all of that brave the storm stuff is uh, coming out. Make sure that you check out movies this week. Jay and I talked about blade runner and we talked about the last Jedi and justice league trailers. And, uh, we're talking Mr. Robot on sight and sound so we are so subscribe to the youtube channel if you have not yet and uh, if you're a new listener i know that some people found our podcast feed last week due to our uh, after party if you're a new listener thank you so much for uh checking us out and i hope that uh you like what you hear and you subscribe to uh everything thanks you can follow me on twitter and instagram at what ups now at jay williams jay the lot of the e on twitter and instagram it's the same for both music show every single Friday. I've been getting the community more involved in those discussions. I'm sick of just hearing my own opinion. So I want to hear what you guys have to say. If you want to get involved in the conversation, join the Sight and Sound Facebook group. That's all I've got. 